Because let's face it, I have a problem. Yay! Hey everybody, I'm Catherine and I'm here today with Bookcase Showcase number two. I finally figured out a name to call it. And today, I am not showcasing physical books, but instead, I'm gonna show the books that I have on audiobook because I have gotten huge into the audiobooks. I find them so, so easy to incorporate into everyday life, whether it's showering, driving, cooking, falling asleep. Like, I just, I can get through a book in about a week, which is awesome, because some of these books are like 13 hours long. Really long. So, just as a disclaimer, this video is not sponsored by anyone, let alone by Audible, but I just want to share what audiobooks I have. And Audible is the vehicle that I kind of get them from because honestly, except through like iTunes, I don't know anywhere else you can really get audiobooks to buy. I do, however, get a lot of my audiobooks from the library. I'm actually doing, while I'm filming this, Bill Nye's recent release, Undeniable, which is really fascinating and nerdy and awesome and mind-blowing. Definitely one that you should look into if you are at all interested in like science and evolution and stuff. So the first audiobook that I ever bought was Water for Elephants by Sarah Gruen. I loved Water for Elephants. I haven't technically actually listened to the audiobook. I had a physical copy and I went to Florida several years ago with, on a family trip with my mom and her then boyfriend. And honestly, it was the book that I read for the first couple days while very, very tediously driving around in the car. But I was heartbroken and I wanted to have more than one type of copy of it because it was just so fantastic. The audiobook itself is really great as well. I just have already read the book, so I haven't needed to reread it yet. But the time will come and audiobook will be the way I go. I then have the first and the second Veronica Mars books by Rob Thomas. Oh my God. We started, my friends and I, the first book narrated by Kristen Bell on the way home from VEA 2014. And holy shit, it was awesome. Awesome. Which is why I did the second book in audio as well. But if you've seen my review, you know the audio narrator wasn't the same but still it was a really good book and it was really a book that was like for the fans. I have a copy of Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne Jones on audio. I have listened to this and I have read and reread that book so many times. I am in love with Howl. I mean, I named my dog Sophie for Christ's sakes. Like, yeah. And the audio itself is amazing, amazing as well. Definitely worth the listen. The narrator is great. The story is fantastic. It is definitely one of those classic children's books that I feel is very underappreciated and needs to be more mainstream because every child should read Howl's Moving Castle. It is just that good. I have both Changeless and Blameless by Gail Carriger on audio. I also own these books as well in physical copies. But I redid the entire series on, audio, or on audio, whether it was through the library or by me purchasing the books on Audible when like a couple of them were under $5. So they are amazing. The narrator was fan, fantastic. She really brings to life Alexia and she does different voices for all the characters. It was amazing. So I have a collection of books from Audible that I used a credit for because it was like $30 called The Enchanted Collection. So if I remember correctly, because it's not actually listing the books, which is very annoying, but it has Alice in Wonderland, Black Beauty, um, The Secret Garden, and like two more books that I don't know which they are, but I'll put them somewhere here. But I got this one because it's so many classic children's books that I love. I actually haven't read all of them. I'm pretty sure I started reading Black Beauty and never actually finished. It was very depressing. But I I have read a lot of them, but 
they're the types of books where if I can't fall asleep, I'll put it on to sleep because I know the story. And the narrators so far have been really great. So eventually I do want to make it through the entire collection, but so far I think I've only really started Alice in Wonderland, if memory serves. So around Halloween, Audible was giving away a free copy of The Legend of Sleepy Hollow by Washington Irvine. Washington Irving, not Irvine. I've never actually read the whole original story of Sleepy Hollow. I'm pretty sure I've done like fairy tale versions. And of course I watched the Sleepy Hollow movie with Johnny Depp, but yeah, artistic license on that one. So I was really excited. I knew it was just a short story, so it wouldn't take me that long. I think it took me a couple days of driving just back and forth to work to really get through it. And it was really worth the read, and I'm really happy I didn't actually spend money on it. But yeah, definitely an awesome free read. Then around Christmas time, Audible released a copy of The Snow Queen by Hans Christian Andersen. I have a feeling this was kind of prompted by the fact that Frozen has really blown up. And you know, Christmas and snow really go together. Like The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, I've read The Snow Queen, but I don't think I've read the full Snow Queen. So it was really interesting to really quickly go through because it's only an hour long. Like it didn't take that long at all. So it was definitely worth the download and worth the listen. A final book from Audible that I got for free was You Have to Fucking Eat by Adam Mansbach. This is the companion book to You Have to Fucking Sleep. Why don't you fucking sleep? Go the fuck to sleep. Go the fuck to sleep. And it is narrated by Brian Cranston. Like Breaking Bad Brian Cranston. It is awesome. I've listened to it a couple times. It's only really like five minutes long so it doesn't take long to listen to it all. But it is awesome. It is just like I feel bad for the parents with picky children. I was totally one of them. After reading Bossy Pants by Tina Fey and actually doing it on audio from the library, I was really interested to do Amy Poehler's Yes Please on audio as well, especially since she narrates it herself too, along with a couple guest narrators like Kathleen Turner, very randomly. Um, it was good. I really liked Amy Poehler. I thought she did an awesome job, but I thought it'd be a little more funny. It is, however, definitely worth a listen, especially if you are a huge Polar fan and if you are interested in Yes Please at all. So it was one, I used a credit for it and I don't regret using my credit for it at all. It was good. So in the late fall, early winter, I went through my huge Maria V. Snyder reading of the Poison Trilogy. So I got Poison Study, Magic Study, and Fire Study all on audio as well as the Whisper Sync um, Amazon Kindle book that goes with it. So I don't think I actually used a credit for any of them because it was cheaper to buy the very inexpensive Kindle book and then the very inexpensive Audible book. And the awesome thing is that Amazon and Audible have like their their whisper sync is what they call it. So it actually syncs together the books with the corresponding audiobooks. So I was able to read both um, digital and like do the audiobook. And it kept track of my place, which was awesome. I wasn't fumbling to try and find a chapter or a page. It was perfect. I loved it. Plus, the books were awesome. First one's definitely the best. And you can check out my reviews for books one and three. I was slightly disappointed with two and three, but we're not gonna go there. I did the third King Chronicles book, uh, The Serpent's Shadow by Rick Riordan on audio. I did the first two books on audio as well. I could not get into the physical book. I found it very difficult. So I figured I might as well just bite the bullet and use my credit to get the audio book as well. And it was awesome. I loved it. I love the conclusion to the series and it just, it ended perfectly and it ended right where it should. The narrators for Carter and Sadie are fantastic and they do all of the characters voices really well and in a very similar manner too which made it really interesting to listen to and I loved it. So I got Half Blood by Jennifer L. Armentrout on audio. I do not, do not suggest doing this. I feel as though it was really a credit wasted while listening to the like little snippet 
online of the narrator, I thought it was okay. You get actually into the story and the narrator's voice was so irritating and catty the entire time. Like there was no off button. It was, it was bad. Definitely just read the book. Read the book. Don't even, don't even. Yeah. Can I return audiobooks? I'd like to return it. Is there like a time frame that I can't return it in? I should look into that. So I got City of Glass and Clockwork Angel, both by Cassandra Clare on audio. I can't remember if I used credits or if I just bought them because they were a good deal. City of Glass is the book that I left off in in the Mortal Instruments series, and I haven't started the Infernal Devices, so I figured the first book would be a good step. I'm really excited to do them. Uh, the narrator for one of them is like Ed Westwick, as in Chuck Bass. So, yeah. I don't think I actually have that one, though. I have a feeling that's like the second Infernal Device book or something. Um, but he narrates. And I will swoon. I have a copy of The Fifth Wave by Rick Yancey on audio. This is a book that I just have not had the time to get around to physically cracking open and reading it. So I figured audio was going to be the way to go, especially since they're making a movie, aren't they? Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're making a movie. I want to read the book before the movie comes out, which, let's face it, my TBR is pretty big. We'll see how that happens. But that's the great thing about audiobooks. I can have another book on the go and doing the audiobook just during the minute times during the day, and it gets read pretty quickly. So, definite bonus. I have a copy of Anna Green Gables by Lucy Maud Montgomery. Pretty sure this one was like $2, which is why I just bought it on Audible. I love this book. It's such a timeless Canadian classic and I try and watch the movies, all of them, at least once a year, usually around Christmas. So I just, it's one of those books that you can just pull off the shelf and it just, just, you feel like at home. Does anyone else feel that way? So while I was road tripping with my friend Vicky a couple years ago, I picked up a copy of Horns by Joe Hill. I will link down below the review we did of that audiobook. It was freaking awesome but I was an idiot and I uh, pretty sure I took it to a used bookstore and traded it in for all I know it could still be sitting up on a shelf upstairs the guy might not have taken it but point being said I'm not sure I have it anymore and I had it on CD and CDs on audiobooks while driving very difficult the uh, apps on the phone I can like plug my phone into my car and it just goes it's awesome but since I loved horns so much, and it was, whoa, awesome, I decided I was going to do Nosferatu by Joe Hill on audiobook as well. It's another one I haven't actually started yet. I just used a credit because I had a credit and I wanted to get it. Other books have come up. But you have to be in the right mindset for a horror book on audio. So I'm really hoping I can do it during a road trip. Maybe while driving to BEA for, you know, this year, 2015, in New York City, because hopefully I'm driving with friends, but if I'm not, if I'm driving by myself, because no one lives by me, all alone, then I'll need a book to listen to. Maybe it'll be that. They are really, really good road trip books because you don't want to stop. And if you don't stop, you don't have to stop driving until you're too tired. Don't fall asleep at the wheel. I have a copy of Throne of Glass by Sarah J. Moss on audiobook. I physically own all of these books in one form or the other, um, but I needed to reread Throne of Glass before I could start reading Crown of Midnight, Narrow Fire, and all that goodness. And I did not have the time to physically sit down and read it at the time because I really should have been studying for a psychology Christmas exam at the time. We're just gonna not talk about that. So I did the audiobook and I actually think I might get the audiobook, use one of my credits or a couple of my credits to get the other ones as well on audio because the narrator was really awesome. And I found it was just really nice to do on audiobook. And I was also able to, you know, switch between them read a couple chapters in the book, 
do a couple chapters in audio works out well. So the last book I have on audio is actually one that I just recently, as of filming this, finished reading, listening to, since I don't have a physical copy. Although after listening to this book, I'm going to have to go and get a physical copy because I'll need this series on my shelf and I will definitely be buying the second one on audio because it was fantastic. Even though the narrator is different because it's different person narrating the book in the book anyways it's a different person's story but that is Grave Mercy by Robin Lefevers and oh my god oh my god it, it was it was so good I tried reading this book as an, uh, an e-galley from NetGalley years ago like before the book came out so we're talking like what 2011 2012 how long has this book been out anyways it expired so I couldn't finish it. But I also had real difficulty getting into this book. And I found that with audio, it kind of just cuts through that. It's different than reading. I don't know. I love it. That's it for my bookcase showcase for audiobooks. I think I have a couple like files of audiobooks that I scavenged from like library files, um, which I, I, the, technically you know didn't pay for but I transferred them over onto devices so I could listen to them later I'm pretty sure I've since lost those devices so I've lost the audiobooks I know one of them was fire by Kristen Kishore really good on audio too um, yes I use two apps on my iPhone my iPod and my iPad because I am Apple crazy yes I am and that is the Audible app, of course, for books that I buy through Audible, but also the Overdrive app for any books I get through the library, which has been amazing. They're both really awesome apps. And the fact that I'm able to get audiobooks from the library makes it super awesome as well, because who doesn't like getting books from the library? The only problem, of course, with those is that they, they expire. They are automatically returned. So I have to finish reading my Bill Nye book before the end of next, for mid next week or something. I think I have like five days left. So got to get on that. Otherwise it'll be a DNF simply because there's a huge wait list for it. So this is it for bookcase showcase number two. And you'll see me back here every Friday in May with more bookcase showcase fun. It's going to be awesome. So until next time guys, happy reading. Let me know down below if you like audiobooks, if you hate audiobooks, if any of these books struck, stroked your fancy, helps if I can speak, in audiobook form, and I'll see you next time. Happy reading.